Hey guys, Morty here. In this video, I wanna show you uh, what I've been doing to externally power my Sony cameras. It's actually a pretty cool um, DIY thing. I had a lot of fun building this, and maybe some of you guys will wanna build something similar. So first things first, if you wanted to uh, externally power any camera at all, you really should have a dummy battery like one of these. Uh, this, is, this fits into the battery cavity and gives you a, uh, a DC input that you can then uh, plug into um, other things. I'll show you on the bottom of my camera here. I've got one of these. Um, there is actually a little battery door. I'm sorry, there's a door. Well, it's a door in the battery door. I'm not really sure what to call that. It's a uh, little rubber stopper that can be popped out, as you see there, and um, allows you to fish a, the DC uh, input out. Um, and originally, these things come with um, a AC adapter like this. And the idea with these is you can then plug this into the wall, plug the end of that into the dummy battery, and you can run your camera and never have to worry about batteries again. And that's great if you've got a wall outlet nearby, but the whole idea, at least for me, is to be able to be mobile and run off of larger capacity batteries than the ones that they give you. So what I did is I built this. Basically what that thing is attached to the side of the cage there is a battery charger. If you've ever bought cheap third-party batteries or that came with a charger or maybe just bought a cheap charger off of eBay or anything like that, you've probably gotten um, something that looks kind of like these. And these are uh, pretty standard um, chargers. This one's a for Sony camcorder batteries. Uh, this one's for Canon uh, DSLR batteries, like an LPE6. Um, I've got more of these things here, and they all look pretty much the same. Here's one for a... Here's one for Canon, I'm sorry, Panasonic camcorders. Um, and you'll notice that they look the same, um, except for the part that the battery goes into, and that's because they are. Uh, these are just plates that pop off. Um, let me play for the camera to focus, sorry. There right, we go, these plates just pop off, and the charging base is the same in all of them. You'll see it says 8.4 volts, and um, you know, uh, whatever kind of battery you're attaching to this can be charged. They're all, all these camera batteries are more or less between 7.2 and 8.4, and they can all be ch charged uh, the same way. So you can actually take one of these battery plates and swap them with another base, and it'll still charge. I mean, it's just it's literally just a piece of plastic with some wires. Um, and they attach to these pins inside of the charging base, um, which, you know, a positive and negative. There's actually a third pin that doesn't seem to ever get used. I've opened up a whole bunch of these, and they're all the same inside. So the third pin isn't really attached to anything. Um, and then you plug this into the wall, and you charge your battery. So what I did, um, because I have, I happen to own all kinds of batteries for different things. I've got, I've got these uh, Sony, uh, what is this, F970, uh, you know, camcorder battery. This is great for my LED lights or my Atomos Ninja recorder. I've got Panasonic batteries like this one. Uh, I've got, here's a Canon LPE6, you know, DSLR battery. Um, and I've got tons of these things. And with this adapter, um, the idea is that I can attach any of them to the camera using the appropriate plate. Um, so let's grab my, uh, here's my Sony uh, camcorder plate, and I love these because they just have the biggest bat capacity batteries for these. And all I have to do is pop this on there. And here's one of my ginormous Sony camcorder batteries. You see, it's actually weighing the thing down, it's so heavy. I can use a smaller one. Do I have any smaller ones? Yeah, here's a smaller one. Okay, you don't have to use one that's this big. Here's a normal sized one. This is the, uh, it doesn't say, this is, a, you know, it's a knockoff from VidPro. Again, uh, VidPro and Power2000 are brands that I happen to like. Turn this thing on, and you heard it already came to life. And, oh, looks like that battery's dead. Okay, that's not a good example. <laughs> uh, I must have been using this with my lights. Uh, this one's, I have a whole stack of batteries here. All right, let's use the big one. This one was only used a little bit last time, so it's probably got most of its battery left. And it's gonna tell us, boom, 94% battery left on there. Now you'll notice what's actually really cool about this test, and I wasn't expecting that, is that it does tell you um, approximately how much battery life is left. So unlike certain other types of external batteries uh, solutions which will just feed a constant voltage into the camera, this thing can actually measure and meter and tell you approximately what's left, which is very useful not just because, um, you know, for you to keep track of for yourself, but also because the camera will 
um, determine when it's too low to continue operation and shut itself down, closing the files and not um, allowing corruption on the card. The last thing you ever want to do if you're ever recording is just have the battery supply shut off suddenly because you will uh, very likely corrupt whatever file was currently being written to. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very bad idea to, uh, to let that happen. So now if you wanted to swap out this battery plate and use this with, uh, let's say here, like a Canon battery like this, um, put that on, say I'm shooting something with people who have, you know, Canon DSLRs, I want to swap batteries with them, no problem, just take a, uh, a Canon battery, this one happens to be, uh, no, it's not a Canon battery, where are my Canon batteries? Sorry guys, this was really just a quick, quick video, I really wasn't planning on spending a lot of time on this, so I didn't really set everything up. I don't even know where my can of batteries are. I have one around here somewhere. But anyway, swap them around. And the idea here is just you can take these plates, put whichever one you want on it, and then power your camera off of whatever you have available. Um, you know, and that's pretty cool. Now, how I built this, it's really just one of these. Um, it's just, the camera will focus, it's just one of the charging bases without the plate on it. All I did is I opened it up. Um, if you take this off, the sticker off, there's two screws here. Um, you un I undo it. There's a positive and negative lead on... Um, uh, you know, the, these, these little copper pins here, um, and inside of it, there's a wire, a black and red wire, very clearly marked positive and negative, which are attached to the circuit board. So I took the circuit board off, I cut the black and red wire, and then I took the charger that comes with the dummy batteries. See this guy here? This is what comes, when you buy a dummy battery, it comes with a, an AC adapter. Um, I think I mentioned that earlier in the video. If I already did, I apologize for repeating it. Um, and I cracked this open, focus, good. Uh, and I took this little, um, the rubber uh, protector there. Uh, I took it out inside here also. It's very clearly marked with the same positive and negative red and black wires. It's all very, very simple. Then all I had to do is inside of here, um, connect the black wire to the black wire and the red wire to the red wire, and then fish it out. Once you take out the circuit board, this hole, this is this uh, car charger port for these battery chargers um, is empty. And so then all I had to do is can actually turn this and show you, and then just fish this out from there, um, and it's actually held in pretty well. Um, now you could solder the black and red wires together inside of there. I just used some wire nuts that I happen to have and just twisted them together. Um, you, it's not really going to have a lot of stress inside of there because this is held on by the rubber um, parts, you know, around the hole. So it's actually going to there, there isn't going to be any stress on the connection inside of there. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, and then um, and then I drilled a hole through it. So I can fish a um, little hex screw inside to tighten it onto uh, a cage like this. I'll show you. I'll just loosen this up. There you go. See, just have a standard quarter inch twenty screw, which you can put onto anything like this. Um, now, if you don't have a cage um, that you know around your camera, you want something a little bit uh, lower profile. I happen to like using a cage, but you can always get a something like a. Um, uh, a cold shoe bracket or something like that or, or, or mount and put on top of the camera. I don't like putting too much stress on the hot shoe mount of the camera because it's uh, there's actually a lot of pins in there that does like some, some uh, different kind of accessory connections. I don't want to break that or bend any of the pins. So I would recommend getting a, even just a flash bracket like this. I mean, this thing is, I think I spent $7 on this on Amazon and it just, uh, you know, and you could just put, um, you know, you can attach it to that next to the camera. Uh, or if you really want to go very low profile, um, one of the things I, I tried doing is I bought one of these clamps. Uh, this is a C-stand clamp, um, also very cheap on Amazon, a few bucks. You can probably buy one of these in a hardware store. Um, I put a couple of screws through the bottom of it so the base is attached to it, and then you can just clamp this onto the leg of a tripod. Or um, I actually once did event coverage on a monopod where I, was, I needed to be mobile and moving around a lot, and I attached this to the base of my monopod. Um, and so basically the camera was just sitting on top of the monopod like it always does with one little wire going down um, to the battery about where my fingers uh, were holding the monopod. So that was actually the lowest profile setup and worked pretty well. I think I shot that one for hours on one of these batteries and that was pretty cool. Um, the focus, there we go. Anyway, another thing to take into consideration is these uh, dummy batteries. You'll see this one has a... Um, Hold it up close here, focus, there we go. Uh, it's got one wire coming out of one side. Now the thing is some of these, um, some Sony cameras have the battery door, the little uh, opening for the wire to stick out on the other side. So this one actually was originally made for like NEX cameras. This is an old stock 
Power 2000 brand battery. Uh, the new ones are all, inter um, it, it's now reversible. This one was not reversible, so I had to actually open it up, drill a hole, put the, the cable on the right side, and then tape it up because I wanted to use this with my A7S, and this was made for NEX, the older NEX cameras, which had the battery door on the other side. The opening was on the wrong side. So to make sure that if you're gonna buy one of these that you get one that works for your camera, I personally recommend the reversible kind. Um, that's what I have in here right now. I'll show you. Um, this is the newer stock. This is also Power 2000, but this is the current one, so just make sure you don't get the old ones. Uh, you know, you see the bottom here has a groove, so you can switch which side the battery is going to come out of. Okay, guys, so if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If, uh, you know, I apologize that I didn't actually do a step-by-step -step showing how, you know, what the insides of these things look like. I, I've built these already. I've been using them. I really wasn't so interested in taking it apart and showing you again how to build it. If there's enough interest, maybe I'll see if I can source some more parts and build another one. Um, but in the meantime, hope you guys found this uh, useful. And if not, I hope you at least found it interesting. All right, take care. See you next time.